Warriors United! Back with another episode of Bigger Warriors 2 and the 1% Club. Hope you guys are doing well this Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning. Hope you guys are conquesting yourselves and conquesting everything around you. And uh, for under God's purposes, hope you guys are doing well. Thank you guys for the comments, feedbacks, uh, donations, everything you guys are doing. I think it's wonderful. Uh, a reminder, Tuesday at 6 o'clock, we're going to try to do a second live stream and talk for about an hour or so. Uh, I'll probably, probably do it while I'm uh, driving the car or maybe stopping and uh, doing it at that point in between uh, work uh, tasks. But we'll do it. We'll do it on Tuesday. And I hope we can answer some questions or at least give you my feedback about how things look to me and I've experienced over the years myself. So let's do some shout outs before we do our topic. Uh, Andrew went two months. Thank you, my friend. Good job. Keep going. Navin Sunder. Thank you. Good job. Volk 4200. Dylan Kirkland had a couple. Thank you. Uh, Light in the Dark, of course. Thank you. Alvin, of course, uh, a long time uh, loyal uh, viewer. Thank you. Alvin, uh, Rezu, Ed, Edza, thank you as well. Rodrigo R. Alfonso uh, Perez. I do go barefoot at times. He had a question about barefoot and uh, probably should do something on that one at some point too. Uh, use, uh, Yuk 5312 from Scotland. Thank you, Luke. Uh, welcome. Michael Angel Escalante. Uh, all right, there goes the headphones. Yeah, after a couple of shouts, I'm sure that's the case. Antonio, thank you, my friend. Boudica uh, Shamani, uh, Shamadan, thank you. Glory be to God, as usual. Thank you, glory be to God. Cameron Vaughn, as usual, thank you. Relentless Salt, thank you. Donna Dawn, as well. Don Trump, thank you. YouTube user, three years on SR. Congratulations, my friend. Keep up the good work. Keep it up. Uh, on the booster, 100 day, day 173, very good. We're all on different journeys, my friend. We're all on different journeys, warriors. And we just have to kind of keep supporting each other and knowing that this is the right thing to do. Uh, Art, uh, Archangel, I think, 7946, two months, congratulations. In the dog, 17, thank you. Nathan, Andy, uh, Artie, I think it's Artie, 4223, thank you, my friend. Uh, SI33PY Sage, maybe Sleepy Sleep, I'm sorry, Sleepy Sage, thank you. How can I use skills in computers? We'll talk about that probably in another one. Thank you, Sleepy Sage. Alex Masters, thank you. Using uh, using your daughter idea, ideas of daughters is for lust. Thank you, my friend. You can get away from licking your lust. If you think, you, if you think of women as daughters, uh, mothers, and um, what was the other thing I said? Uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, mothers, daughters, and uh, sisters, then you should be in good shape. Uh, nice quote from uh, Alfred Batman. Very quote. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it, Alex. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, let's talk about this at two minutes, at three minutes. Let's talk about the topic. Our topic for this one is going to be money and semen retention. Now, we've talked about this before in some ways, but let's kind of talk about some ideas here that's going to make it easier for you to accumulate money when it comes to semen retention. So let's kind of look at this a little bit. So remember now, as we take a step back, you're changing your lifestyle from one of which of you're releasing and all you're doing is focusing on women, focusing on pictures, focusing on those things, getting the short-term pleasures. And now you're looking at a long-term like spiritual, almost spiritual kind of renovation and changing yourself into some different type of high value male. And as a result of that, you're going to get a lot of benefits. And I think the closer you get to God, uh, and it's not easy, day by day, we're always having temptations, we always have situations where we have to be aware. But as you do this more, you're getting closer to the spiritual side of yourself, you're able to then unlock a lot of potential that you have. Because you've been focusing a lot on the, the physical world, and you can accumulate and do things in the physical world, of course, but you're not going to have the same type of... Um, prosperity that God's talking about unless you kind of connect with your creator first and that's how you're doing this through seam retention now along the way we talked about all the benefits of seam retention we've talked about uh, attraction from women attraction from uh, you know different types of things animals attracted to you all kinds of different things we've talked about but we don't really talk about the idea that much about the the wealth and the finances because in many regards God will give everything you need. And so money and being rich and those things is very difficult for rich people to get to heaven because they think everything is based on their wealth and what they've accumulated. And so it becomes, they become the God, the money becomes the God, and, and the creator's not there. So you have to also keep in mind that money for money itself's sake 
is not that important. Money is the root of all evil, and the, the love of money is the root of all evil. The money itself is not really, it's just a tangible thing we change, whether it's a, you know, using um, you know, crypt cryptocurrency, whether it's using the petrodollar, it doesn't really matter what it is, you're talking about gold. That's just, that's just the, the article, the object. It's the love of the money that hurts people. And so as you learn more about self-control, as you learn about this, you end up getting more a spiritual kind of awareness. And you realize that you're really kind of just having money as a tool. And you can use it in several, many different ways, right? You can invest money, you can purchase real estate, you can purchase stocks, you can buy all those type of things. You can also purchase hobbies. You can put money into things like, uh, you know, rare books, rare, you know, rare, you know, kind of objects, things like that, and make money that way. There's lots of ways that you can make money. But when you look at how you are using retention, the whole idea of self-control puts you in another stratosphere when it comes to being able to be successful. It almost is like money will be attracted to you as well, just like your women are attracted to you, just like things are attracted to you because they sense an energy force. Everything has energy, remember, even money. Even money has an energy around it. It's built out of energy, right? So it's gonna kinda go ahead and attract you like a magnet to things that have strong energy. And if you have strong energy, you're going to attract it. Now, am I going to say, well, basically, all you do is think about money. And there's a lot of books that talk about that. Think and Grow Rich, of course, and other things we talk about. But it's really because you have definite plans, you have purposes, you have things you're doing, and you're taking a step-by-step -step process to do that. So how does retention actually go ahead and help you give you an opportunity to make more money? Well, first of all, we all like to have jobs, right? We're all doing jobs. Males especially love to work and do different things, especially in jobs that they like. And so one of the things that's going to help you with this is, is actually how you find that job, especially if you're younger. How do you find that first job? Well, a lot of times what happens is you're attracting things to you. You're attracting people to you. And one of the biggest things you can do in your job searches is connections, networking. And networking talks about you connecting with other people. And so you're basically connecting with other people and people see you just like women will see you. And women are also in these business situations as well, whether they're running companies, whether they're working companies, whether they're a secretary in companies, they're all working companies. So they're gonna see you, they're gonna recommend, here's a person we should look at to. And this is a chance for you then to get into a company that you really, or a, a workplace you wanna get into. So the more you can self-control yourself, because there's very few people that can do this with their self-control, and you can control the retention, you can also control the things around you. You're not gonna be as likely to drink as much, you know, eat as much. Uh, you're not gonna have gambling issues, drug issues, all these things, because you've learned to control the biggest one of all. And my mind, warriors, and this is just my mind, but as you're learning, as you're losing the ability to, as you're releasing, you're also then setting yourself up for all these other types of things. It is no wonder, we talked about this in the, the other video about the nighttime, it is no wonder that you're combining alcohol and drugs perhaps and overeating sometimes with a lot of sexual deviant behaviors. You have a lot of those things, it all kind of matches together. People get drunk, they do a lot of inhibitions go, they have a lot of other things going on, they can't control themselves, and all of a sudden now you're getting a lot of releases and it just kind of permeates and gets worse and worse as time goes on. Well, if you think about somebody who's hiring that, you're not gonna hire a person you see that does this, who loses control of themselves all the time. They're not a good worker, they're not gonna be a good manager, they're not gonna be good at anything because they have no self-control. Their anger man, anger is probably pretty high. You know people who, who release a lot, they get into a, a violent behaviors, they get angry, a lot of it's because they know they're releasing energy. It's probably uh, God inside of them is trying to you know, tell them, you gotta quit doing this, and they're frustrated and upset and they, they're fighting it, but a lot of times they become angry. And so there's an anger management issue with a lot of those people as well, because a lot of times they can't control that sexual behavior that they have. So when we talk about this idea of trying to, um, you know, uh, make money, first of all, it's gonna be the job that you have or the jobs that you have. I have several different ones across. I do a lot of independent contracting and I do a lot of several jobs, but a lot of those came from word of mouth and people who, who knew me, recognized me. And uh, you know, a lot of that's gonna be the attraction you have as well. And so how you look at that, how people interact with you makes a difference. So number one, it's how you interact with people. 
It makes a big difference. People see the glow with you. People see who you are. And people see that you've got to be different than the rest of the people. And once again, they want to be around you. So whether it's a romantic situation, which is one thing we've always talked about, but it's also a workplace situation. It's also something where people want to be around you. You look like an, a successful person. The more you retain, the more your physical qualities become apparent, mental qualities become apparent, all those things become more apparent because you're keeping all those nutrients. We've talked about this all, all the time. You keep all that stuff that God's given you, God is gonna repay you by making life abundant. And abundance is gonna be recognizing that you have a lot of skills, you have a lot of intelligence, you have a lot of uh, spiritualness uh, that comes out and people are naturally attracted to that. Women, of course, are gonna be but besides that, other men, other women who, who are not romantically in, interested in you, they will be also attracted to you from a business standpoint. So one thing is going to be to make money. Now, the other thing then is that you're talking about how to use your money. And I always talk about things like investments and stocks and bonds and crypto and all the kind of stuff that you have a Bitcoin. Things are all out there. But how does seam retention affect this? Well... The idea then is self-control again is going to give you clarity. You have purpose, so you have goals. Your goals are to make a million dollars this year, fine. So you're going to sit there and say, okay, how do I do that? You're going to spend more of your time researching than you are worrying about women. You're always going to be sitting there saying, how can I make more money? How can I do this better? I do this with these videos now. I'm going to go base, basically kind of start doing how can I, you know, we're getting near 6,000 type viewers, five and a half, I think it is right now. And once we get to seven, eight, nine, ten, I may try to try to get a computer and do more. Uh, since most of you guys are interested in what we're talking about, maybe do more with this and actually kind of make this more like a show and different things like that. So I'm thinking ahead as well, trying to build on this, right? Try to give you guys more information, more research, more things I can give you as time goes on to make these broadcasts better and better, topics and ideas that we talk about. So I have goals on this, just like we all have goals on things we're doing. And, the, and when you have goals, you're focusing your mind on the goals. You're not focusing your mind on women, okay? So that's going to end up actually saving you money, and we'll talk about that in a second, but it's also going to give you a chance to research and figure out what the best course of actions are. You're not going to be right all, all the time. But you also have a tendency then, because you're self-controlled, you're probably going to end up being more um, conservative. And that can help you in some ways. Now, you're going to also take chances because you have a, you know, you have a lot of confidence. You're going to go out there and do that. But you can also have a side of you that's going to say, okay, if I have a stock that's five points up or five points down, I'm going to sell it and get rid of it so that basically I'm not gonna hold on to these things and, and I'm not gonna sit there and look at it as going down or even if it goes up, I may decide to keep it. But most of the time, I'm gonna have some kind of rules, rules set up for stocks and bonds and different things like that to actually be able to do it. So when I look at this, I'm really looking at trying to use my self-control to make myself more advantageous to understand what's happening, understand what stocks are, understands what uh, bonds are, understands these different things that you can make money on. Now, real estate's another thing. Uh, years ago, Vicar Warrior's dad had, had three buildings and uh, Vicar Warrior too helped him with his buildings and I understood a lot about buildings and there's lots of ways you can make money off of rehabbing, Sell, you know, have it selling buildings. Um, you can do a lot of things with that as well. You can also rent out buy buildings, use it for collateral, buy another building, all of a sudden now you have several buildings and now you're renting to people. But again, the reason why that is important is because your self-control will allow you to be able to interact with people and will allow you to be able to know what's going on. People who have a lot of, and this is just my opinion, watching people, you could tell people have a lot of, um, you know, they have a lot of interaction, a lot of intercourse. You can just tell. You know, people, women, men, you know, when you people talk about these high body counts, you look at those people, they look like they're, they're dying or dead in their, their eyes. They look like they don't have any energy. And so you could tell the people who spend most of their time doing this, going out, doing this, working, you know, working on trying to find people, all this kind of stuff, instead of those people who are trying to hustle and make some money. And so when you're looking at this, that's why what you say is better to have your control and understand what you're doing, be able to know yourself, control yourself better. Now you can use your resources to do that. And of course, the other thing is when you're talking about 
you know, spending all kinds of money on pictures and women intercourse having, trying to have intercourse with several people every day, every week, whatever it might be. All of a sudden, now you're spending a heck of a lot of money. So again, most men, because if they, especially if they fall in love with a woman, will give to them. We'll give them money. We'll, you know, give them whatever they need to have and be, you know, be at their service. And that's good and bad, right? Women in some ways want that, other ways don't want that, but all we know is that that's gonna spend a lot of your money. Is it worth it? Again, when you look at spending money, is this worth it? Is spending money on someone, if, especially if you're just having a one night stand with them or thinking about that, or you're even short term relationship, is this money worth spending on a person? Now, from a, um, a Christian standpoint, it's always great to give, and I do it all the time, and you're not really expecting anything back, and that's great. That, to me, is wonderful. You're giving other people things, whether they're homeless, whether they need help, whether they need help in education. I help people all the time like that, students, uh, you know, college students, you know, students who need help, tutoring, high school students, things like that. I help all, I love helping people. This is why I kind of do what I'm doing here. I mean, but at some level, if you're talking about that you're not getting something back from it. Now, I get a great satisfaction and gratefulness out of all you know, you guys to help things. If I can help you a little bit, I feel grateful. And I'm very grateful for God for giving me this opportunity to talk and to help you guys in this, in this situation, this type of way. But I also I do this with school and the high schools and colleges and companies that I work with uh, all through the con country. So the thing is, is that when I look at this, I think it's important to recognize you wanna be a giver. You want to be a giver. And I think people who are more retainers, they're givers. And when you give, you're going to get things back. Not always money back, but you're going to get time. You're going to get people who who respect you. And a lot of ways down the line, a giver is, to my mind, the best type of person to be. Obviously, the takers is not such a, such a good thing. In our society, as time goes on, what happens, uh, and you see this a lot as, as uh, dynasties or different types of periods of time have gone through, say, for example, Roman Empire. At the beginning of the Roman Empire, everybody was a giver. People were giving. They tried to build it up. There was very few takers. But as time goes on, generations go on, what ends up happening is become people become more spoiled. They don't realize what their parents, grandparents did to actually get them to this point. They don't experience that themselves. They experience the spoilness of adverse, you know, having all the things there and not being able then to understand what hard work is to s survive and to try to, uh, to, you know, to get through all the obstacles and make a living that way. So a lot of people don't know the hard work aspect. And this is why it's important if you're having kids, if you have kids yourself, if you are someone who's out there who's young, learn how to work hard. Hard work is very important. Now, working smart is also obviously important, but you want to work hard because you want to learn how to overcome obstacles. You want to learn to overcome barriers. And again, if you're using your money wisely, right, you're not just going out every night of the week and blowing it out, you know, at parties and bars and things like that, then you're really going ahead and investing that money, putting it somewhere. And you're learning more about that as well. So obviously in getting jobs, working with people, retention is very important. Investing, you're going to get insight. You're going to have more time for research. You're not going to fool around, chasing women around all the time. And certainly when it comes to spending money, you're going to have more times than not, the people who re retain a lot, I've seen it before, they tend to be very well organized. They spend their time, their money, they're controlling their money just as well as they're controlling everything else. And so now they spend time thinking about that money, not just blowing it and looking at things. The one last thing I will leave you here is that I tend to look at things and whether this is right or wrong, you know, you, you guys may think it's right or wrong, but I look at everything I do as an investment. So if you look at things as an investment, now you're saying to yourself, okay, and now I know this sounds like a cold hearted business approach, but I look at things as an investment. So, and, and, and let's take the emotional side out of it. Okay, so for example, you find somebody is this person going to help you make money down the line? That's a decision you have to make. With my kids, I put my kids through high school, college. They got a, uh, you know, graduate degrees, all that kind of stuff. That was an investment. Now they're doing well and the investment's paying off, right? 
Uh, I do a hobby, whether it's rare uh, comic books, rare coins, um, that's an investment, right? You're putting time into it. You're investing in yourself, right? Working out, you know, trying to stay fit, exercising, um, you know, bike riding, weights, things like that. All that stuff is actually an investment because you're building yourself up. So it's not hard to kind of understand why I think everything is an investment. Now, of course, there's the emotional factor and other things you're doing for a lot of these things, of course. I mean, I can just get married for a business reason, even though some people probably do do that. Basically, the idea, but is it one of the factors you have to consider? Is this person you're going to marry to a partner that's going to end up helping you make money? Or is this person going to end up kind of draining you, which is why a lot of people, a lot of men nowadays don't get married. And they're worried about the laws in certain states. They're worried about, uh, you know, women divorcing them and taking all their money, things like that. Okay. So the thing is, is that it's important to understand why this is, this is important to understand as you become more retainer, as you're really becoming this, it's important to be able to say, okay, I need to really understand the money that I have here and use it wisely and use it to keep growing and investing. In theory, what you should be in is a great book called The Richest Man in Babylon that I read many, many years ago, a small book. But it talks about the fact that you should pay yourself first and then everything else, should, you should eventually live on your, um, you, you have a principal, the, the money you're putting in and your interest. You should be living on the interest because the interest should eventually grow. This is why you see a lot of people who make a lot of money, they end up living on their interest. They never touch their principal, the, the bottom line they put in, but everything comes from that. And so as time goes on, you can build that. But this becomes a smart type of thing to do as you go on. All right, friends, I hope this one helped you a little bit longer this time, but I wanted to kind of focus on some of these ideas about um, wealth and trying to figure out things, what's important to do. And I think it's also important to kind of look at why is it that people who have self-control can also control a lot of other things as well. And one of those things is money too. So I hope this helped guys. Certainly, you know, I'm happy to kind of talk about specific areas with this as well, but I figured I'd do a general one this time to kind of focus on the importance of how money can be affected by this journey you're on. In fact, making you more prosperous and wealth and also have, but remember wealth again is not that important in my estimation. What's important is your relationship with your Lord and all the other things you have to get from that, you should be grateful for and appreciative as you have it. All right, friends, on a great Sunday uh, morning, I hope you guys have the rest of the good day and have a good day the rest of the day. And then I'll probably try to do one tomorrow if I get a chance. If not, we'll, uh, we'll talk again on Tuesday during the, uh, the live uh, chat, but I'll try to go back and look at some, uh, um, see what things, some shout outs and things like that to catch up with and also some new topics you guys talked about over the last week or so. All right, my friends, two things I'll leave you with. One, every day is a new day to a great warrior. So have a great day today, guys. And number two, we always know we're in a battle every day. This is why I don't care if you have lots of money. I don't care if you have no money at all. I don't care if you have great looks, you have no looks at all, great cars, great material things. Every day, you're going to have something tempting you because the evil one always wants you to move away from God, not towards God. And you want to move towards God every day of your life the best you can and repent of your sins. And I've had many of them over the years myself. Repent and be able to say, okay, God, I'm going to try my best. Keep trying. Keep trying. A lifestyle is important. Keep trying to change the best you can and things will work out. And because of all that, we have to call ourselves and say, Battle!